Hi, everybody, and happy, what is this, Little Thursday. Thank you for joining us for another round of our wonderful parent and family webinars. Uh, this week, we have Kelly O'Shaughnessy from the Office of Career Development and Professional Engagement. She has a wonderful presentation. Uh, we will have time at the end for questions, but please, at the bottom of your screens, there is a Q&A. You're welcome to put questions in there, and if we can try to get to them during the presentation, we'll do that. Uh, other than that, I'm going to turn everything over to Kelly and enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome. And I appreciate you joining me this afternoon. Um, if you're on the East Coast uh, or close by, hopefully you're enjoying your lunch while you listen in. As uh, Josie mentioned, my name is Kelly O'Shaughnessy. I'm currently the Director of Career Readiness Pathways, and um, that is a new position focusing on career readiness initiatives across campus with working with faculty and administrators and coaches to help uh, students understand their career readiness as they progress through Wayne and Mary. I'm also a member of the class of 2005 from Wayne and Mary and uh, graduated with an English degree here and um, have been back as a member of the office for about 10 years now. As you can see on the screen now, we have quite a, a good sized team here supporting students in their career development, both uh, connecting with them face to face, connecting with employers, and also working behind the scenes to make sure all of our events happen. We also are a career resource for life. And so we have two members on our team who focus on alumni career development and professional engagement as well. And they serve remotely out of DC and Chicago. We are still expanding our team and have several more positions to, to add this year and hopefully a few more next year. Our goal is to be able to serve all students across all majors uh, here at the college. We serve all undergraduates, all graduate arts and sciences, all graduate VIMS, uh, so students from the School of Marine Science, graduate students in the School of Education, and um, collaborate heavily with the uh, Career Center who works with all of our law students and all of our graduate business students. I'd like to start off with sharing uh, a little bit of data from our most recent uh, Next Destination survey. And I say most recent because it is our most recent with the pretty graphics. We should be getting the graphics soon for the class of 2022, and we are still surveying the class of 2023. We continue to survey through December 31st after graduation. Um, so this is representation of the class of 2021. So if you can think mid-pandemic, we actually had an increase in our knowledge rate of 79%. So we heard or were able to confirm the next destination of 79% of the class of 2021. And as you can see, 97% of those responses share that they what they are doing next either somewhat or very well aligns with their career goals. Uh, we had 52% going straight into full-time employment and 36% um, pursuing graduate or continuing education. And that is representative of those who are either going straight into maybe a one-year master's in um, say teaching or accounting or athletic training. So many of the career paths that do require a master's degree for licensure in order to get started in the field. And then a few students also going straight into PhD um, programs, a few going straight into law or um, med medical school as well. But many students who are pursuing medical school will actually do what we call continuing education. And that is a one to two year um, intensive program to make sure that they are completing all of their prereqs for those uh, medical school programs. Outside of that, though, we know that graduate school is an opportunity you meant to advance your career. And so the fact that we actually had an increase in employment uh, rates in 2021 over 2020 was, was a great sign. If you'd like to see past next destination reports, you can go to wm.edu slash career and go to the About Us Outcomes page. When it comes to reporting on our top employers, these are all companies and organizations who hired at least four. Uh, we very proudly do not depend on one company to hire 
20 or more because if they have one bad year, so do we. So instead, what is actually really exciting to share is the fact that the class of 2021 was hired by 477 unique companies and organizations. And that is truly almost a one-to-one -one ratio when you break down the numbers of our, of our response rate and those who went straight into employment. And so it's a representation of the fact that your options are truly only limited by your own imagination when it comes to uh, graduating. And a little sneak peek for the class of 2022, it was almost 700 unique companies and organizations for that class year. The salary data is uh, not a full picture because that is not a required question. So many students will stop at the where they're working and not answer any more questions from there. Uh, so this is representative of those who chose to share and it is uh, across uh, all industries for the, for the overall mean salary there. Also sharing uh, with our continuing education and graduate professional school, they uh, were enrolled in 140 distinct graduate programs and institutions. So here is a, a sampling of that list, uh, not a complete list by any means. Um, but this is a, a sampling of where our students um, tend to go right after William and Mary. On average, for the past decade, we've had anywhere from 25 to 35 percent of our graduating class pursuing uh, continuing education and the remainder mostly um, full time employment. And this also is one of my favorite graphics to share, um, showing how our alumni really do find their way to all corners of the world. Uh, and every year, it's almost the same number going to Western Europe as we have in the Southwest of the United States. Uh, but that is uh, a, a true indication of the fact that your options are truly only limited by your own imagination with these, uh, with a degree from William & Mary. And we're gonna talk more about how we help support that in their career readiness. So with career readiness, we focus on the NACE career competencies. These are the eight competencies all employers are looking for, no matter their industry, no matter the student's uh, experiences or major. Each one of these is accompanied by a list of about eight to 12 unique observable behaviors. These are also listed on our website, and I'm going to share a few ways throughout uh, this presentation today as to how we support students identifying which competencies they have and learning how to articulate the, competen the competencies they have, whether it be for graduate school applications or preparing for interviews for internships or full-time jobs. But the main thing to know is that they are developing these competencies across all of their experiences, both in class, as well as in clubs and organizations, as in internships and part-time jobs and volunteer roles. There are all types of opportunities to, for them to hone and gain new competencies that they can take with them to their next experience. The career exploration is not a linear process. It is not a checklist of these are the things I must do my freshman year, my sophomore year, my junior year in order to get a job. Um, we know a more successful search is a more targeted search. So for a student to, or anyone really to be exploring and applying to positions they want, not just ones that they think will hire them, is, is statistically much more successful. And so we try to uh, encourage students to make sure that they are going through this exploration cycle at any stage uh, of their time here. We have freshmen who come in who have already prioritized their goals and have already built experiences. And we have seniors who are working on assessing what it is they want or maybe reassessing what they want after having an internship or two and realizing they want something different. And so we have um, a full page of resources and I'm gonna go through a few of them here that help support the career exploration. Before I get to those though, I wanna make sure that you understand why we focus on exploration and industry, as you'll see a little bit later, rather than major, because we know 93% of employers are focusing on a candidate's experiences and skills before they look at what they've studied in school. Very few companies and organizations are hiring only based on major, and those tend to be accounting or education, where they want to make sure you're ready to sit for the CPA exam, 
or maybe you're uh, wanting to teach a specific subject area. But outside of that, your major cannot dictate your career path. It can certainly align with your career path. And it will definitely provide everyone with a perspective that they take with them into any career path they pursue. But it is not the sole indicator of what you have as options for a career path. And because of that, we have a plethora of resources for exploration. I'm going to show you through a little deeper on some of these, but um, LinkedIn is a great way. You can go to um, LinkedIn.com. You can search any institution. Um, you don't have to be a current student at William and Mary to see what William and Mary alumni have gone on to do. So when you go to that uh, William and Mary page, you can click on the alumni tab and you can filter through the almost 70,000 alumni and students who are active on LinkedIn to see, and you can filter them based on where they currently live, where they currently work, um, what their job function is. So not their industry, but their job function. You can filter them by what they studied as well as what skills they say they have. And so that's a great way for a student who might say, I wanna study psychology. What have alumni gone on to do who have studied psychology? Well, we can look at that. And while you'll find a good number who have gone on to counseling mental health or gone on to academia and research, that is by far the just scratching the surface of what alumni have gone on to do with a psychology degree, since it is one of our more popular majors. Um, it's a very versatile major, as are any majors from William Mary. Um, employers are very interested in liberal arts perspectives and critical thinking, and so they're more interested in why someone wants to do the work that they do rather than what someone chose to study as an undergraduate. Another resource I'll touch on here is career, uh, candidcareer.com. This is linked on our career exploration page of our, on, of our website. And it is a library of informational interviews where students can um, watch recorded interviews, either the whole thing or just in snippets to learn more about different career paths and different industries. And I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into each of the others. So focus two, students do need to use their William & Mary credentials for this. Um, they do have to also use an access code, one tribe. It is all on our website about focus two. Um, the, the access code is there for them because it has to be connected to a William & Mary um, student email address. But this is a self-paced uh, self-assessment tool where they have access to five different self-assessments. And I tell students that it should only take five to 10 minutes to do each of these assessments, um, keeping in mind that uh, if they're taking longer than that, they're kind of thinking too hard about it. They need to just go with their gut reaction and see what comes up because they can take the assessments really as often as, as many times as they want to see what different results they get. And with this tool, it connects them to jobs that align with their responses from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And this is really just a starting point. It's not the answer to the question. We don't tell students you would be good at this job because of your interests aligning with others who are happy in that job. It just means you might be interested in it. So it's a great starting uh, place for students who wanna explore based on what we consider their VIPs, their values, their interests, their personality, and their skills. Since we know major does not have to dictate their career options, we know that more confident and informed career choices are made through the VIPs. Um, not everyone is going to find a job that aligns with all four. Instead, taking these assessments allows students and alumni to, to take a look at the big picture and then decide where do I want to align my career choices? Do I want them to be connected to specific values I want involved in my work every day? Or do I want to um, you know, have my interests and my skills involved in my work? And so that's, again, another starting place for this. And we have other resources that would be good follow-up for these as well. Another one that I admittedly am not a huge fan of the name, but I absolutely love the resource. The name is, what can I do with this major? But as I just mentioned, um, this is it, not the determination of all options. And this resource actually goes so much farther beyond that. And so for an example, I've, I've taken a screenshot here of English. 
I was an English major. And so this is a great way to show all the different ways that the career paths they show that can align with the skills gained in the major. So while I may not use the fact that I studied Shakespeare for three semesters in my current job, I definitely use the fact that I was required to analyze a piece of literature from different perspectives because I do that every day with students analyzing their career paths and options from the perspective they bring to the office. And so that's what this resource does. It breaks down and shows you careers that align with skills gained while studying that major and shows you a breakdown of all the different job functions people say they have, followed by all the different types of organizations that hire for those functions. It's a really valuable tool for a great starting place or a, or a second starting place. I even show this to students who have decided what they want, but haven't really explored all that exists within a different area and gives them more keywords to use when searching for opportunities or to build out their network. So also a great tool. Again, you wanna access this from our website. You can access this one as well. If you were to Google, what can I do with this major? It'll ask you to pay for it. We've already done so. So you can find it on the career exploration page of the wm.edu slash career. And finally, to support career exploration, we have the MACE program. It stands for My Active Career Exploration. These dates are from this past fall, um, but as you can see, it's, it's offered once a semester, and it is open to all students. Uh, traditionally, it had only been open to freshmen and sophomores, but we've recently opened it up to all students. And this semester, we had both um, juniors and seniors involved, and they found it also very um, helpful and supportive. It is a six-week um, cumulative workshop series. And so students who participate in the series sign up for all six weeks. Um, there's no grade attached to the end, but they do com complete a three semester plan that helps them narrow down what they're going to do over the next three semesters to gain exposure and experience to the areas that they've now learned about. Every student in the program has a different experience because they all come in with different levels of um, decisions already made for their career exploration. And each week they take one of the focus two assessments. And then I show them how to dive a little bit deeper into their exploration resources and strategies. And they add to their three semester plan each week. So the picture that you see there is one of the exercises we do in the last week. And you can see also the three semester plan matrix there for students to allow them to set up what classes they want to take, what clubs they want to join, who they want to shadow, um, what internships or research opportunities might they have, and where they want to plot those out over the next three semesters to, again, gain exposure and experience. So now let's shift over to the professional development side of career readiness. Um, it's really next step thinking and getting students prepared for applying to positions and networking for those uh, opportunities. Career Readiness Foundations is something that we currently offer four times a year, once a semester and twice over the summer. It is a self-paced, completely virtual program that we provide through Blackboard. And it is an opportunity for students to get resources and tips on resumes, cover letters, LinkedIn profiles, and interview practice. Participants are encouraged to submit drafts of each of those, including a recorded 15 minute or less in a practice interview. And then they receive feedback from a member of our professional team. So they don't even have to come into the office to get uh, resources and feedback on each of those materials. We are working towards offering this perpetually throughout the year, but as of right now, we offer it. It's um, offered for four weeks at a time, Again, each semester and twice over the summer. Big interview of, is what I was just referencing there. Uh, that is the tool that they that we offer to all students to practice interviews. They can certainly come in for an in-person interview, but they can also practice any time of the day or night, record themselves and send it to someone that they trust to give them advice. They can send it to an advisor. Um, we also have some faculty who use this as a tool for oral quizzes um, for their classes. So they may have already practiced it in class as well. 
And down in the bottom left of your screen, you see um, a graphic of our uh, professional headshot photo booth. And this is open uh, and accessible to all students whenever the office is open, um, as well as alumni, faculty, and staff. Uh, we've had a couple of parents use it as well during Parent and Family Weekend. Uh, it is a professional photo booth where there's great lighting and a clean backdrop, and you can even make a few um, edits to the to the picture so that you have a great professional headshot for your um, professional uh, LinkedIn profile or one network profile or maybe a personal website. To go in a little deeper on some of those resources, tribecareers.wm.edu. So, so far I've mentioned one website that is our main resource uh, or main website for resources, strategies, handouts, and information about career development. And that's the wm.edu slash career. And there is a page on there specifically for parents, for resources. This is our other website where you have to have a William Mary student login to use and alumni can also continue to access this site. Tribecareers.wm.edu. At its foundation, I, I say is anything that has a date attached to it. They want to schedule an appointment. They want to sign up for an industry-specific newsletter that comes out on specific dates. They want to apply to a job or internship, both on campus or off. And there's a deadline for those. Um, they want to attend a workshop or an event or an information session. Anything that has a date attached to it, they can find in tribecareers.wm.edu. Um, so encourage your students to log into this site and see what's current. Um, there's literally thousands of internships posted and full-time jobs every day. Um, these are employers who are specifically seeking William & Mary students and alumni. And even beyond that, there are some employers who have the capability to pay to have their positions posted to multiple institutions, but even then they are they are choosing which institutions they want to see their positions. And so a little bit of networking is already happening for your student here. But to take networking even farther, we just this summer launched one network.wm.edu. You should have also recently received your first invitation to join One Network. Um, One Network just launched this past summer in July, and we already have almost 5,000 users. And this is a William & Mary specific networking platform. You can only be on this platform if you are a current student, an alum, a parent of a current student or alum, or a faculty or staff member, as well as a few volunteers. So the idea of this platform is that you do not have to request to connect with anyone as you do on LinkedIn. You are already connected with everyone else on the platform simply by being on it. And so we've already seen um, a great trend in the direct messaging function is the most commonly used function of this platform so far. You can also um, search through the directory and it gets pretty granular as to how you can find someone who might have something in common with you. It could be a club that you're in, a, class, a major that you've uh, chosen, or even the industry that they're in that you might want to pursue. And so in, I encourage you to join. Um, you can register your account. And I'm going to add to the chat here um, some language that can give you uh, some next steps for this. So give me just a minute to copy that into the chat if you would like to to join one network. Um, oh, that didn't include the link. Let's try. So that's the, the long link, but WM, um, I'm sorry, one network.wm.edu should also get you there. But this is allowed, uh, allowing you to join the network as well and, and to encourage your students to get in explore the directory, um, learn about events, and build out their career connections. Kelly, if I may, yes. a question as far as uh, accessing the, what can I do with this major that's mm -hmm. accessible? Because uh, it seems that it is a paid site. Is there a way to actually access it free and utilize it? Yes, it is free on our website, the wm.edu slash career. 
From there, you would go to the student page. From the student page, you can access the career exploration section. And then you can scroll down and find it under um, explore by major. You can also find it under the resources section of that page. So you go to wm.edu slash career students career exploration, and you should find it there under the explore by major section. Thank you so much, Kelly. Absolutely. Even though I'm not a fan of the name, it honestly is one of my favorite resources that we provide. <laughs> So a little bit about applied learning at Wayman Mary. Um, it's great that students and, and so many of you as parents are familiar with the term internships. And we want to encourage students to get experience in all shapes and forms. And internships are a great way to do that. But it's not the only way. Um, externships are one to two day shadowing opportunities, sometimes maybe up to a week. We do offer a winter break externship program. Um, and that started with parents actually raising their hand to say, let's take a step out of the process for our students. Um, where most externships are something that you ask, can I shadow you for a day? Can I follow you around and see what it's like? Um, but that takes steps of researching and finding someone who you might wanna shadow. Several years ago, um, parents offered to host opportunities to shadow for a day over winter break. And we've been able to expand that opportunity quite drastically. Um, and so while the deadline has already passed for this winter break, I wanted to put it out there that you're welcome to raise your hand for future externships. Um, and uh, you can do, if you're interested in doing so, you can uh, connect with me and I'll get you in connect, uh, get you in touch with our internships and applied learning team. Um, I'll be providing my email address at the end uh, for today. Uh, but students also typically get a lot out of shadowing, um, and I have found freshmen and sophomores having a great productive summer out of shadowing 10 to 12 people in, in one summer. Instead of doing one internship, they're able to explore and, and get perspectives from a lot of different areas, and they're expanding their network that way. So that is a great way to get started with experience and, and learning what it is that they might wanna do next. Research, study abroad, clubs and organizations, these are just a few of the ways, um, volunteer, uh, community engagement are all ways that students can gain experience and can actually use those experiences to, um, to develop their resume and develop their career path. See a couple of hands raised, and so I'm going to see what happens when I click view. Ah, I can see. Um, so Suzanne Harris, I'm going to um, allow you to ask your question now. So go right ahead. I don't yeah. believe we have that engaged. I think it has to be a type answer me? because our population is so big. Um, oh, Suzanne, I, I, are you there? Yeah, yes. I can hear you. Oh, great. Okay, Sorry, I I um I accidentally <laughs> raised my hand. I didn't do it. Um, oh. knowing, so sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Well, now we know that works. So, um, I'll continue with the session, and if uh, we um, you can definitely continue to put your questions in the Q and A, uh, section on on that icon, and we'll get to them as the as they come, or if at the end. And there we go. So I've already mentioned the externship program, but also wanted to give you a couple of examples of what those look like. Um, we've had everything from an orthopedic surgeon where they're actually in the operating room for two days to um, one that's not listed here, but uh, students rotated through four different departments at 1-800-Flowers in New York City. We can also provide funding for uh, students who identify uh, an externship they would like to participate in that may be in a different location than where they'll be for winter break. Um, so that funding is available if they have it, have been able to find an externship other at, at another location. Um, when it comes to these the the formal winter break externship program, we do have it as an application process since some of our hosts are only able to. Um, welcome one or two students, and there might be 20 students interested. 
And so the more opportunities we can provide for William Mary students to shadow, the more exposure they can get to things that they might be interested in as career paths. So as I mentioned earlier, we focus on industry advising and industry communities, since we know um, targeting what where you want to work and what type of work you want to do is a more successful path. And truly at its core, career decision making is trying to decide between really two things. Um, this is the function I want to have every day or the, the job, I, the skills I want to use. Now I have to decide what industry I want to do that in. Or you can flip it around and say, I know I want to be in this industry, but I don't know what function I want within it. And so even something like accounting, for instance, I worked with one student who um, was a member of the golf team and she was a, uh, knew that she wanted to work towards an accounting firm one day, but she wanted to try out different areas of accounting. And so she actually had an internship at Callaway Golf, um, the brand, the product um, within their accounting department, and then later accepted a full-time position at an accounting firm. So that's an example of how that can work. But we as a team focus on building out relationships across um, faculty, employers, alumni, parents, and graduate programs as they align with the different industries um, that you see listed here. And we communicate these opportunities to engage through our industry-specific newsletters. So the three newsletters you see on the left, students get without asking for them. Career Conversations goes to every student every Sunday. If your uh, William & Mary student is not aware of what we are up to, this newsletter is referencing any of the content that is relevant to half the campus or more. And it's usually looking ahead for the next week or two. And then we also will do a sneak peek of each of the industries for the next month. Jumpstart goes out to all first and second year students, so all freshmen and sophomores, once a month. And it gives them career exploration resources of the month, tribe careers tips of the month. It's really focusing on teaching them how to use us over their first two years as a student here. And it, it continues off of what they learn at orientation. And then RAISE has actually just been rebranded as RISE, <laughs> um, but they all students get that newsletter as well, once a month, I believe, um, maybe every other week. And it focuses on applied learning opportunities, tips, and strategies. The five you see on the right side of your screen, the business careers, creative, education, and human service, public service, and science and technology, students have to opt into these. They do this in their Tribe Careers account. And we give them instructions every week in the Career Conversations newsletter. There are step-by-step -step instructions as to how to find which industry newsletter they want to sign up for. This way, if they want to go into a creative career, they know that just two weeks ago, we had an alum who's an executive at Paramount Pictures zooming in for a virtual meetup. And then they don't have to pay attention to the fact that the finance um, investment banking firms are hiring this April or May for summer 2025. Industry relevant career advice is so unique to each area. And so we want students to not get stressed out about what their peers might need, but make sure they know what they need for their own industry. And so we please help encourage your students students to sign up for the industry specific newsletters. They can sign up for as many as they want. They can change their options as many as often as they'd like. Um, every time they check the box or uncheck the box, they will receive or not receive the next edition that goes out. They also go out at different frequencies depending on the um, activity of that industry that time of year, since each industry hires at a different timeline. So I've given you a hint at what some of our programs are, um, but just wanted to give you a rundown. We offer workshops, typically called crash courses. These are 30 minute sessions on all basic um, career development topics, resumes, cover letters, interview practice, career fair prep, um, how to network, 
uh, how to explore careers, how to prepare for your and maximize your breaks. Um, so we offer these throughout the academic semester. We also sometimes have employers who will host workshops and they'll show up under information sessions since they're employer specific. And they might have um, a workshop on federal resumes or on um, uh, case interview prep or technical interviews. So a different employer might be hosting that workshop. A meetup is where we have an alum or a panel of alumni share their perspectives on their career paths, how they got to where they are today and what advice they have. So they're more representing the William Mary Network, not necessarily the current employer. As opposed to an information session, which is essentially that organization's sales pitch as to why you should wanna come work with us. And they typically bring alumni with them to talk about the transition from William & Mary to that organization and how they are successful there. And so these happen, all of these happen year round. Panels are everything from industry specific to the one you see here is actually students sharing their experiences about, um, I believe this one was about, I think internships, I can't read the screen behind them. Um, but we have students share their perspectives of their experiences. And then we also have panels. Um, just recently, we had one on volunteer firefighting uh, for students who are interested in pre-health careers and how that is an option for an experience, um, for an applied learning experience. And those panels are offered and are advertised sometimes in career conversations if they're relevant to all students, or they might be in the industry specific newsletters um, to make sure that students who would be interested in that career path would know. And finally, we've brought back our trips um, and treks successfully over the last two years since the pandemic where we have um, physically taken students to visit um, the Wall Street in New York City uh, is a three day trip uh, where they visit, I think 10 or 12 different organizations um, we've had this year two different trips to D.C., one that was public service careers related, where they uh, visited alumni at the Pentagon, Capitol Building, and Grant Thornton, which is mostly federal consulting. And then we also had a trip to D.C. that was creative careers, where we met up with alumni who work at the Smithsonian and the Kennedy Center, and students were able to see the entire facility, what it's like to work there, learn from the career paths of those people who work there and about opportunities to gain experience. And we host trips like these uh, throughout the year for different industries. And that's just a sample of what we've hosted most recently. Excitingly, we've seen an increase in engagement since the pandemic, both across students and employers, um, where we know other institutions are seeing uh, engagement continue to kind of drop off and people remain in virtual settings. That is not the case at William & Mary. We have heard loud and clear from our students that they want in-person experiences and interactions. And so we have worked with um, our employers as well as new employers to come and be on campus and visible um, across all of our fairs and information sessions. Keeping in mind too, that we also host um, campus-wide fairs, industry-wide fairs every semester, as well as industry-specific fairs. Um, so far this year, we've had our Meet the Firms, which is accounting and consulting firms. We've had what is more of an expo and, and um, networking event with From Dog Street to Wall Street, which is finance-specific. We've also had our Science Career Expo uh, this year where we had a record number of student and employer attendance there. That is a growing event. Uh, in the spring semester, we collaborate for a government education nonprofit fair that is with a lot of DC employers for students who are interested in federal government and nonprofit roles in that region. And we also have a K-12 education interview day early in um, January for those students who are receiving teacher licensure or administration degrees. Uh, we also have every other year a Ferguson Blair publishing seminar where we have networking and um, uh, panels with alumni and employers across publishing. Again, just a sampling of what we offer across all industries.
And Kelly, I had a question regarding your last slide uh, for the career exploration, the trips piece. Is that funded by yes. William & Mary? And if not, what is a typical cost profile for that? So um, they are partially funded by William & Mary, but we do um, have some fees involved. Um, some of the fee is to help offset the cost that we that we do provide or that we do cover. And some is to get a little bit of follow through and buy in as well. Um, but the day trips to DC are anywhere from, have been 20 to $40. Um, the trip to New York City is uh, a bit more expensive, but we do have funding for each of those as well when students have need. So we want students to um, apply to be part of those trips. And again, it's an application process for those because space is limited Deter or space is determined by the smallest conference room of the combination of companies that are being visited. Um, and so they tend to be 20 to um, 40 students, depending on the trip, um, and the costs vary. But again, we have funding available for um, students who need those um, for that trip. So apply, see if you get in the trip, and then find out if we uh, about the funding and then ask about that. Thank you so much, Kelly. Yep. All right. So I'm pretty much at the end here. I just want to make sure uh, you are aware of how to tell your students to engage with us. We encourage them to come in as early as they are ready to. I mean, we are connecting with them as early as orientation and the summer before they even move in um, and come in as often as they like. We are open year round. A lot of students don't realize that. Just because classes end for breaks, we're still here. Um, we close a week between Christmas and New Year's, 4th of July, Labor Day, Memorial Day, and that's about it. <laughs> Other than that, we're open. And we have offered um, virtual appointments long before the pandemic, but we continue to offer them now both phone and Zoom as well as in person. Uh, and then we have quick advising hours in our building where no appointment is necessary. Students can just drop in with any question they have Monday through Thursday, two to four. Um, we've also started doing quick advising uh, hours in different spaces across campus. So one of my colleagues is in Miller Hall. Another is in the School of Education. Another has tested out IIC and Adair. And these are separated out by business, education, and counsel and and counseling, um, science. I also do quick advising for student athletes over in Kaplan, since, uh, and they're all different hours depending on the activity in the buildings at the time. So I am ready to start taking some questions. I think you've got some ready for me. We, we've got a few. Um, let's see, let's see, I guess just go backwards a little bit here, but do we run this overview for students? I know that we're gonna be uploading this of course to YouTube and shared with parents uh, via Campus ESP, but do students get this, this type of a presentation? This is almost identical to the presentation that new students receive at orientation. The only difference is um, that they get uh, so I, I make it a little bit shorter because they spend 20 minutes actually doing a career exploration exercise um, at orientation to help them explore, start exploring that day based on past experiences, what themes they might want to continue to explore as, as a student here. And so content is almost identical, except they get a little bit more hands-on um, self-reflective exercise. Wonderful. And then a lot of all of this content is advertised through our newsletters. Everything you saw here, everything I talked about is referenced in each of our newsletters throughout the year. So Mace and Career Readiness Foundations, they see it advertised in Career Conversations. Um, the meetups and events are all in the industry specific newsletters. Everything that we do is in Tribe Careers and wm.edu slash career. Looks like you took care of a couple of questions right there. Okay, there you go. <laughs> um, a couple of them uh, regarding MACE. How many students uh, can take MACE per semester? Is it open just to all students? Uh, and when is the registration open for the spring? So I've had as many as 46 students participate in MACE in one semester. Um, and that year, I think we had maybe 38 finish it. Since again, there's no grade, um, I do tend to lose a few around midterms that 
don't come back. <laughs> um, I will also continue to meet with any of those students who start MACE. Um, and we are in the process of working on a pilot for an asynchronous um, self-paced virtual version in Tribe Careers that we hope to be launching by this summer. Um, we're designing it right now so it could be available kind of whenever somebody might want to start it, they could start it and then um, they would have access to all the same resources. Keeping in mind too, all the resources that we use in MACE are available to all students. The main advantages to MACE are that it's a dedicated hour and a half that the students put on their calendar for six weeks. They get the opportunity to discuss their thoughts around their careers with their peers, with other students, and begin networking right then and there. Someone might say, oh, my cousin does that, or did you know about this class, or I just joined this club and that sounds like something you're talking about. That's networking right there. Um, the other advantage to it is that it is a cumulative step process, but any student who wants to just use one or two of the resources certainly can on their own. They're all on that career exploration website. Registration for spring usually launches um, uh, in mid to late January. So it'll open up before they return from winter break, but it will not close until after ad drop. I've had too many times where students would register for MACE and then register for other classes and then realize they're no longer available for MACE. <laughs> and so I decided just to start it one week later. So MACE doesn't begin until after ad drop ends. And so that's an important timeline to know. Good day. Uh, big question here too. When students graduate, do they still have access to these resources? For life. They have access to everything for life. Um, there are some things that require a little bit of um, uh, changing up their, their logins, but uh, when it comes to one network focused to tribe careers, they have access to all of them. Um, we encourage people to start uh, networking more as well. I mean, networking results in 80% of all job offers. But what we tell students is that the goal of networking isn't to get the job or the interview or, um, or an internship. That's the happy result of good networking. The goal of networking is simply to know more people doing jobs that you think you might want or that you think have cool jobs or maybe live in a city where you want to live. The goal of networking is simply to know more people. And now as a William Mary student, every other William Mary parent, every William Mary alum, staff, and faculty member is a member of their network. And so simply talking to people who are doing what they think they want to do, shadowing them, staying in touch with them, that's powerful networking. And we provide the resources for that as well. And as people graduate and become more experienced in their careers and they want to shift around, as we've expanded our team, we have a goal to start um, providing more job opportunities for more experienced alumni. Most of the employers who come to us are looking for entry level or maybe first career transition. And so that's why we, we really focus on networking strategies for more experienced alumni. But we have um, we provide uh, resources, appointments, and, and access to all of that. And with all this network talk, one of our first questions, uh, we have uh, someone with a son in uh, art and art history major and wondering mm -hmm. if William Mary has an alumni network for this discipline. So um, since that was an early question, I'm guessing it came before I gave the example of the Ferguson Blair seminar and the creative careers trip to DC, which like I said, we went to the Smithsonian and, um, and the Kennedy Center. And what was uh, really fun there is we got a special one-on-one um, -on -one talk with um, one of the directors at the Smithsonian who actually has a past life as in foreign service um, first and then and she's an art history alum I think three times over from William Mary and um, then we had a panel of alumni who work across the Smithsonian and we had four different alumni and one had just transitioned out of the Smithsonian into the Library of Congress. And so um, there's examples there. So I would highly encourage them to connect with Krista McQuillan, who's our advisor on creative careers. And in fact, um, next week we have a panel 
that is so large. It's a collaborative panel between public service and creative careers because it's called Minds Behind the Museums. Um, and that is uh, because of the size, we're actually hosting it in the Sadler Center um, instead of in our own space. Um, but that is a panel of uh, uh, perspectives from people who work across a variety of museums. So we absolutely work with students across what industry they want to pursue, making an assumption art and art history wants to pursue a creative career. Um, so that's where they can go from there. Awesome. Thank you for all of that information. We still have some questions. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. we have quite a few questions. Let me see if we can't touch on... Uh, let's see, how do students learn about potential trips? Is it on the website? They, um, they're they all advertised in Tribe Careers and through the industry-specific newsletters and through Career Conversations. And so if they're, if, reading the email, yeah, if they're reading their email from us, they'll, they can't miss it. <laughs> do we know? And we've got someone interested. Is there going to be a DC and a New York trip planned for the spring? Um. Potentially, I do not plan those events. Um, and they'll have to look. Did, right. We we've done them winter break, spring break, and fall break, and we find the best engagement with students to be during fall break. Um, and uh, I, if you're interested in learning more, I can connect you with the industry teams that host the different events. It's less based on location, more based on industry question on externships is uh, what is the deadline for applying to a winter break externship for next year since we're in that time frame? So we tend to have the deadline um, mid to late October. Um, the reason we have that deadline is because the date of the externship is determined by the host and the student together. And the date is determined for the second half of winter break. So after the holidays, and so we want to make sure students are paying attention to us, which they tend to stop doing in later November <laughs> um, because they've got finals to be worried about and, and preparing for the holidays. And so mid to late October is when we get the best um, attention from students to be interested in those. Um, and because we're trying to make sure that the student and the host can connect before the rush of the holidays to determine what date the student would be visiting in um, early January. All right. So we are almost at the one o'clock time. We still have a lot of questions. Where is it? What would be the best address, I guess, to send some of these questions that have not been answered uh, should they want to continue? So if it's very specific to something that um, you learned about today, they can certainly email me at kellyo.wm.edu. It's in my, in my, video screen there, kellyo.wm.edu, because no one needs to learn how to spell O'Shaughnessy. Um, <laughs> or if it's a more generic question, you can always send it to career at wm.edu. And then our um, front desk manager, our office manager will forward that on to the most appropriate team member. So either one of those can work. If you're interested in being uh, considered an employer or host for internships or applied learning or externships or full-time jobs, you can hire, you can email hire the tribe at wm.edu. So I gave you three different email addresses, my own, the general office at career at wm.edu and our employer development team, which is hire the tribe at wm.edu. And this uh, full presentation is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube and shared through our Campus ESP newsletter, uh, as well as our other webinars in the past uh, few months. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kelly, uh, for presenting this with so much useful information and to all the parents, families who have joined us today uh, and hope to see you at our next webinar.